Good morning, ladies, and welcome to this third gathering of FIAT. My name is Patty Schneier, and it's my privilege to welcome you here this morning. A few housekeeping notes. Um, this talk is being recorded today, so we're pleased to be able to do that, and hopefully we'll um, have information about how you can get that recording. I'm sure it'll be on the website. Um, coffee is in the fireside room following the talk this morning in the lounge there until 9.30, so we can gather for refreshment and a little bit of fellowship afterwards. If you haven't already done so, please um, give us your email and you will receive a reminder then about the upcoming FIAT events. We are taking care of the coffee and the refreshments, so we are grateful for either a small contribution for the coffee costs or if you'd like to help by bringing some muffins or some little cookies or something, there's a sign-up sheet in the lounge for our next event. If anyone would like to do that, that would be great. And we are pleased to announce that Fiat will now be offered all year round. And the list of speakers are on Kenrick's website. But I wanted to let you know that our next Fiat gathering will be May 19th. May 19th. Father Randy Soto, Professor of Sacred Scripture, will be the speaker. Then June 16th will be Dr. Larry Feingold. July 21st, Dr. Suzanne Harvath. August 18th, Father Donald Anstetter. And then in September, we'll start back up again, and Father James Mason will be our September speaker. And we already even know October, October 20th, will be Dr. John Gresham. So again, um, May 19th will be the next FIAT event. And now it's my privilege to introduce to you our speaker for today. Ed Hogan is a husband, father, and teacher. Ed and his wife, Jen, have been married for 23 years. They have six children, four boys and two girls. Ed has a PhD in systematic theology from Boston College. He has taught theology on the high school, college, and graduate school levels, as well as in parishes and adult faith formation programs. Prior to coming to St. Louis, Ed served as diocesan theologian Director of Deacon Formation, and Director of the Department of Formation for the Diocese of Saginaw, Michigan. He now serves as the Director of the Paul VI Institute for the Archdiocese of St. Louis and is Associate Professor, Professor of Systematic Theology at Kenrick Lennon Seminary. Please help me welcome Dr. Ed Hogan. Thank you, Patty. I feel very far from you right now. Ladies, good news and bad news. The good news is this will be an interactive demonstration, so I'm not simply going to thunder down on you from up here. The bad news is you all need to move forward for this to work. So if you really gather up front. Thank you to all of my volunteers, you were very kind. Just to conclude, so seeing has been taken away, your primary physical sense. And to do the exercise, what you need to do is stretch out with your other senses, with hearing. And you notice our first person, bang, I know what that is, just based on hearing it. Touch, smell, taste all in the context of memory, what you know from your own experience. Okay, so that's fun, but so what? I told you there was a reason for this. Let's get to the reason now. In prayer, we have different interior senses, different spiritual senses. We often only use one of them, but you can stretch out 
with your other spiritual senses, just as our participants stretched out with their other physical senses. Those other spiritual senses are real. You can learn to use them. What do I mean? As you look around at the stained glass windows here, you see a lot of halos. Now, the simple physical fact is nobody glows. But I ask you to consider, in your memory and in your imagination, aren't there certain people who do? And what that reveals is that there are other senses, interior senses, spiritual senses, and they tell you something about realities that you can't see with your physical eyes. The artist captures something and portrays it to us in physical terms, even though the reality itself is not physical. How would that apply, for example, to Lexio Divina? In the midst of praying with scripture, the backbone spiritual sense is the meaning of the words of scripture. That's your sight, spiritually. Most often, that's the spiritual sense we use when we're praying with scripture, and that is very good. But I want to encourage you to stretch out with your other senses. For example, your imagination. Picture the scene. The application of physical senses. What do you smell? What do you touch? What's the tone of Jesus' voice? Also, more deeply, your attention. Your attention is a spiritual sense. What are you drawn to? Where, as you read scripture, do you want to linger? That wanting to linger, that's a spiritual sense. So, let me read something for you and ask you what comes up as I read this. Stretch out with your other senses. This is the gospel for this past Sunday, a reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one can take them out of the Father's hand. If you go back to that again and again, different spiritual senses will open up. Don't be afraid to use them. I remember I was called to lecture on 9-11. I was living in Omaha, and the director of worship for the cathedral called me up and said, we're going to have a prayer service tonight. Will you come and lecture, please? I said, sure, I'll do whatever you need. Send me the reading so I can pray with it. He sent me the reading. You know what it was? Cain kills Abel. Oh, sweet Jesus. I got that reading, and I almost called him up and said, I can't do this. Because the heart of the reading is where God speaks to Cain and he says, What have you done? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And I stretched out into the sadness of it that day. In the midst of intercession, for example, praying the rosary, what does it look like? The backbone spiritual sense in the rosary is the repetition of the prayers. That's your sight when you're interceding with the rosary. Most often, that's the sense we use, and it is very good. But stretch out with your other senses when you're interceding. Stretch out with your memory. What or who comes to mind? Stretch out with a mother's intuition. Who's on your mind as you pray? Maybe that's a prompt. Wanting to stop somewhere. 
at a place in your own memory, wanting to stop somewhere with respect to a person that you're praying for, wanting to stop somewhere with a particular intercession in their life. So uh, we got a prayer request the other day. Such and so's granddaughter has fractured her skull and has a hematoma. Please pray. And I stopped to pray the Hail Mary. But as I stopped, in my imagination, Jesus was reaching out his hand. And so I stopped there in my prayer. And with Jesus, I reached out my hand and touched the fractured skull. Jesus' hand went inside of it. And he wanted to heal it from the inside. I let go of the Hail Mary at that point and just reached out with Jesus, with my interior senses. One thing to stop somewhere and pray, just to rest there and be with Jesus in the situation, that's another interior sense. Go ahead and stretch out in it. As you prayed the Hail Mary this morning, as you prayed the Rosary this morning, how did you stretch out? What came up for you? If you're the prayer leader, you have to stay on target. But the reason there's a prayer leader is so that the rest of us can stretch out. So go ahead and go there. In the midst of discernment, what happens to you? I'll tell you the story about last spring. My son was deciding where to go to college. And he had two very nice offers on the plate. And we had to help him discern which of those he wanted to accept. Well trained by the Jesuits, his question was, what is the greater good? And I have two goods in front of me, and both are very good. Which is the greater good, and which is the one that God is desiring for me? So we used a technique called the intercessory rosary with him. An intercessory rosary is a technique for another day. I'm not here to talk about that today. But basically, you state an intention and then pray through a decade, and then you talk about, as a group, what came up while we were praying with that. So we did that for several days. And then we would discuss what was coming up. And after a couple of days of praying, we had talked about, this is what it would be like to be at this school. This is what it would be like to be at this school. After a couple of days of that, I looked at him and said, so Thomas, every time you describe this school, you talk about being alone. And every time you talk about this school, you talk about being in a community. What's up with that? He hadn't noticed. It was happening in his prayer, but he didn't notice it. All I did was pay attention to it and call attention to it. And then after a couple more days of praying like this, finally we reached the pivotal point and I said to him, Thomas, what if I were to say to you, you're going to this school? And his whole face lit up, and he paused for about 30 seconds, just to let that refreshment sink in. And after about 30 seconds, he said, well, and I said, stop. You've already told me a lot. So Thomas, what if I were to say to you, Thomas, you're going to this other school? Nothing. And after about 30 seconds, his face fell. And he said, well, and I said, stop. You have already told me a lot. And I just called his attention to what was happening in his face and in his heart as he described those two possibilities. Well, those are just some examples of other things to pay attention to. How do you stretch out with your other senses? So we say, for example, God, talk to me. Give me some guidance. Hmm. What do you expect his voice to sound like? Let me ask you this. Do you have a conscience? Are you my conscience? <laughs> of course you do. But the question is, what does your conscience sound like? What does your conscience sound like? 
Well, some people will say, my mother. <laughs> well, some people would say, my father. My question would be, not what is the voice, but what is the quality of their presence like as your conscience? Wouldn't you say feel like is more accurate than sound like when it comes to conscience? See, we often speak of it, we say our conscience speaks to us, but the way it speaks is more of a feel like than a sound like. It requires us to stretch out with other interior senses. But what if the voice of God is like that? What if he speaks? But we need to stretch out with our other interior senses to hear, to know his guiding hand. So for example, I think this is very helpful. St. Paul refers in Galatians 5 to two things. He says, the works of the flesh are obvious. Rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy. Those are interior voices. Do you know what those are like? Outbursts of fury. I mean, if you have children, you know what outbursts of fury are like, <laughs> whether interiorly or exteriorly. Those are not of the Lord. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those don't sound like, do they? But they are the presence of the Holy Spirit. Wherever those things are, you are sensing the presence of the Spirit. Attention in prayer. Compassion, wanting to linger. That's what the voice of Jesus sounds like in prayer. A heart that goes out. That's what the Blessed Mother sounds like in prayer. What if those are the ways that God is talking to you? All day long, what if that's the way he's talking to you? Through your memory. Through your attention. Through a recurring thought. Through a desire. What if those are ways that God is calling to you? And what if you paid attention to them and acted on them? Well, I won't say what if anymore. I'll say the more that I do it, the more fruitful I become. And the less frantic, because I don't have to plan my day. All I have to do is pay attention and respond. It's very freeing. Now, just a brief pause. Do the interior details really matter? Isn't the main thing to have a sincere heart? Yes, the main thing is to have a sincere heart. It is the one thing necessary in prayer. But just imagine walking into a pharmacy and saying, give me some medicine. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Can, can you be more specific? We have lots of medicine. What kind of sickness are you trying to remedy? What kind of remedy are you looking for? Does acetaminophen or ibuprofen work better for you? Some people are allergic to some kinds of remedy. What method of delivery are you looking for? Liquid? Pill? Gel cap? What flavor? Do the details really matter? Ladies, you've had sick children. Do the details really matter? Yes. yes, they do. The details matter in pharmacy. The details matter in prayer. The details of science matter in pharmacy. Details of things we cannot see, but we can notice their fruits. The details matter in prayer. The use of senses that we cannot see but we can notice their fruits. So imagine going to prayer and saying, give me some grace. <laughs> yeah. Can you be more specific? What's the situation? What kind of graces are you looking for? 
how do you think those graces are going to come to you? In baking, the details matter. Use baking soda or baking powder in your cookies. Use baking soda or baking powder in your brownies. Makes a difference. Leave them out all together and your cookies come out like rocks. Does it matter whether you use white sugar or brown sugar or powdered sugar in your recipe? Ooh, just imagine putting two cups of powdered sugar into your cookie recipe. Does it matter what kind of cinnamon you use? Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't know that one yet. Oh, well, learn, you can learn that one, learn something new. Does it matter if your eggs are room temperature or refrigerated? I got some muffin bakers out there who know that, right? Does it matter whether you separate your egg whites and beat them stiff or just leave it all together? Oh, and how? Don't be overwhelmed. How am I going to apply all that to prayer? Listen, a sincere heart is the main thing in prayer. It's the essential thing. Just as you can bake without knowing all the details, a mother's love is the key ingredient to any baking. Right? So you can pray without knowing all the details of these interior senses. But the details can make your baking richer than it was before. The same is true of prayer. The details of your interior senses can make your prayer and your life much richer than it was before. Here's one last approach. How is God looking at you? Father Hazing likes to talk about this. I know if you've been here before, you know who Father Hazing is. Father Hazing grew up on a farm, and he says, so Graham would look out the window with this particular look, and it meant, it's time for lunch. He knew what that look of Graham was, and he would see it and say, okay, Graham, I'll be in in just a minute. His mother would also look out the window with a particular look, and it didn't mean it's time for lunch. It meant, watch my flowers while you're doing that. And he knew that look from his mother. Yeah, Mom, I'll take care of your flowers. No harm will come to your flowers as a result of this. I resonate with that because I get different looks from my mom. I get different looks from my brothers. I get different looks from my students. The two main ones are, that totally makes sense. And what are you talking about? <laughs> I get looks from my staff. And sometimes the look is, somebody needs to do something here, and you're the boss, so you need to do it. Which is true, right? I get all kinds of looks in my day. So the question is, how is God looking at you? Well, this happened to me once. I was having a conversation with God the Father. And the occasion of the conversation was a fear of flying. For whatever, I was afraid of flying at this point in my life. So I was taking to him my fear of flying. And I gradually realized that the fear of flying was actually a fear of death. And so I was bringing to him my fear of death. And we were kind of having a discussion around that. And I realized that it wasn't a fear of my own death. It was a fear of what would happen to my children if I die. And I, I was having a, a stern conversation with the father. It was not stern on his part, it was stern on my part. And I said to him, like, you tell me this. If I die, what's going to happen to my children? Who's going to take care of them? And at that point, the father just gave me the look, which he sometimes does cocks his head forward, leans in, and raises his eyebrow. And he didn't say anything, but the look said it all. And in the look, he said to me, who do you think is taking care of them right now? And I knew what the look meant, so I said, I am! <laughs> I think I am. 
And that was the point of repentance and conversion. Oh, Father, I am so sorry. Here and now, I place my children in your hands. You're taking care of them. And I'm just helping out. And if and when the time comes that you no longer need me to take care of them, I'm ready to go. So that's part of your interior senses. How is God looking at you? What does it mean? Stretch out with those. So God is Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. So I ask you these two questions for your prayer. Who are you talking to? And who's talking to you? Who are you talking to in prayer? The Father? Jesus? The Holy Spirit? Mary? Guardian Angel? Patron Saint? Whoever it is, take time to behold them. That's a spiritual sense. Look at them. Address them eye to eye. Notice their reaction. Those are interior senses. Who's talking to you? At different times, you will find yourself addressed by different persons. Take time to be held in their gaze. Let them address you with words, with their eyes, with their hands. Some people talk with their hands. Let them talk to you with their hands, with their tone, with their body language, with feeling, and so on and so forth. All of that belongs to you. All of that he gives to you. All of that can make your prayer life richer. My goal today is not to tell you, you have to do these things. I'm no one to tell anyone that. My goal is only to give you the freedom to pay attention to the things that God is already doing in your life and inviting you to notice. Ways that God is wanting to enrich your prayer and your life, but sometimes we don't give him the permission to do that. And here's my conclusion. Imagine taking a hike and only being able to see. It would be a beautiful hike, but you would miss the smell of trees in the spring, the smell of honeysuckle in June, the smell of the damp earth after a rain. You would miss the sound of the birds singing, of water trickling by, of the wind blowing through the trees. You would miss the feel of the wind and the sun on your skin. You can hike with only your eyes. It's a much richer experience when you use all of your physical senses. The same is true of prayer. You can pray with only one interior sense opened. The meaning of the words in Lexio Divina, the repetition of prayers with the rosary. And it is beautiful prayer. But that's not your only spiritual sense. Be attentive to the other spiritual senses that God has given you. Don't be afraid to stretch out with them, with your imagination, with the application of senses, with memory, with attention, with a desire to linger, with an awareness of how God is looking at you. Today is the Feast of St. Anselm of Canterbury, and he opens up his great philosophical work with these words, and I'd like to close with them. And then I have to go to class. Sorry, I can't join you. From St. Anselm. Insignificant man, insignificant woman, 
Escape from your everyday business for a short while. Hide for a moment from your restless thoughts. Break off from your cares and troubles and be less concerned about your tasks and labors. Make a little time for God and rest a while in him. Enter your mind's inner chamber. Shut out everything but God and whatever helps you to seek him. And when you have shut the door, look for him. Speak now to God and say with your whole heart, I seek your face. Your face, Lord, I desire. Lord my God, teach my heart where and how to seek you, where and how to find you. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, through the intercession of the Blessed Mother. Amen.